So we recently received some questions from an existing client about taking loans from his life insurance policies. Now the questions he had were excellent questions because they're questions that are commonly asked by individuals about their whole life insurance policies with respect to loans. How much can I borrow? How does the loan interest work? He had a more specific question, which led into other questions, which we will discuss and answer today. So let's begin with his first question, which is, if I loan 80% of my cash value and repay it in one year, how does that impact my numbers, specifically my numbers in my life insurance policy? So what we're going to go through here is just a breakdown of exactly how this would work. So what I'll begin with is what we've got up top. We've got a dividend rate of 6%, but then a net growth rate of 4%. So one of the things I always like to clarify when it comes to the growth on a whole life insurance policy, particularly the cash value, that's what I'm discussing here, if we see a dividend interest rate of 6%, that is never what the policy will actually be growing by. Meaning, if we were to look at our cash value and say, I've got $100,000 today, and then look at what that cash value is at the end of the policy year. So when the insurance company applies all dividends and guaranteed interest to our policy, how much did it actually grow by? Because if I had $100,000, 6% of $100,000 would be what? $6,000. However, we will not see that to be the case if the dividend rate is 6%. We want to look at the net growth rate what, what we can request from our life insurance agent is the internal rate of return. That's a button we as agents can check on the illustration software and easily provide that report to anyone interested in a whole life insurance policy. Internal rate of return is what we want to request. But I like to refer to this as the net growth rate on the cash value. And we can look at both the yearly growth rate and then also the average over time. Quick side note too, remember that the early years are negative. So when you first start a policy, if I pay in $10,000, I might have $8,000 or $9,000 in cash value. I won't see this until several years pass and the policy gets up and running. So to his question, I want, I want to loan 80% of my cash value. So pre-loan, before I take any money, I've got $100,000 in cash value. We'll assume that my death benefit is $1 million. If the growth is a net of 4%, 4% of $100,000 is $4,000. Okay, when we take that policy loan, remember his question was, how does it impact my numbers? 80% of $100,000 is $80,000. When you borrow against a life insurance policy, what you will see occur is your death benefit will be reduced dollar for dollar. So we borrow $80,000. Our death benefit pre-loan was $1 Post-loan, $920,000. The cost to borrow, the loan interest rate on his policy is 5%. 5% of $80,000 is $4,000. Okay, next step. Remaining CV, this is remaining cash value. I like to refer to this as the remaining equity, 20,000. Pretty simple math here. He had $100,000, loaned 80,000. He's got $20,000 remaining. Now. If this is you, you've got 100 grand and you loaned $80,000 and you have this net growth rate of 4%, what are you still earning that on? Are you earning that on the full 100,000 or only the remaining equity, the remaining cash value? If this $100,000 was in a bank account that was earning 4% and you took out $80,000, what would you earn the 4% on? Only, only what's left over. With the life insurance policy, because I'm borrowing against it, I'm still earning that 4%, that's the net rate, on the full 100,000. How the insurance company does that, how and why they do that, is one, remember they are charging you loan interest when you do borrow, so that, that will help offset the fact that they're still crediting interest to you. But then two, they collateralize the death benefit. So if you die with a loan outstanding, they are on the hook to pay out that much less in life insurance claims, which remember is their first and foremost obligation to honor life insurance claims, their life insurance company. Main takeaway here, you are still earning this $4,000 
on the full $100,000, even though you loaned $80,000. That's the main point I want to emphasize here. So let's go through, through loan repayments here because this is what he was specifically interested in. If I loan 80% of my cash value and repay it in one year, how does it impact my numbers? When I say my numbers, I'm talking about the cash value growth and also the loan interest. What am I gaining in growth and what am I paying in interest? So let's begin with one year, and then I also want to discuss what it looks like if he pays it back in six months, and then also two years, because he did ask about that, two years specifically. So in one year, what will the cash value be, assuming you pay nothing and it grows by $4,000? Very simple example, probably won't work exa exactly like this, but you see where I'm going. $100,000, $4,000 of earnings, that would bring my cash value to what? $104,000, okay. Which the growth, very simple, what we have up top, $4,000. In this specific scenario, how much did you pay in loan interest? If you repaid it in one year, and we'll assume you paid it at month 12, so you just wrote a check for the full amount in one shot, how much would you pay in interest? We've got it up top. $4,000. Okay. How about this? What if you pay it back in six months? Firstly, what's your cash value? Well, the cash value is going to be the same. This is what it will grow to after one year. So with life insurance policies, we typically see all dividends and interest applied to the policy at the end of each year. Just in our experience, that's usually what we see happen. So six months in, I won't see the cash value growth. At the end of the policy year, 12 months later, I see a big lump sum of earnings applied to my policy. So cash value is going to grow at the same pace. The growth, $4,000. How much did you pay in interest? Well, if you paid it back in six months, how life insurance loan interest works is it accrues daily at annual simple interest. So to simplify that, over six months, if you paid it off, you would have paid a total of $82,000. The $80,000 loan principal plus $2,000 in loan interest. So that's your repayment, or I should say the interest paid is $2,000 in this example, if you paid it in six months. Now, what if you repaid it in two years? So firstly, let's look at the cash value growth. In two years, what will your cash value have grown to? Here's the number. It's going to be, let's see if I can fit this, 108, 160. And that's a compounding 4% return. That's where I came up with that. So after one year, you're at 104, and then 4% 4 of 104 would give you just over $108,000. So over two years, your growth is 8160. Okay. Now, the loan interest, how much would you have paid? There's a couple what ifs here. If you paid the loan interest after one year, because what happens with a life insurance policy on your anniversary date, which is a fancy word for your premium due date, if you have a loan outstanding, that's when the insurance company will bill you for the loan interest. If he pays the loan interest, one year into it, what happens at the one year mark? He would have paid $4,000, okay. How about the two year mark? If he says, okay, at the end of 24 months, I got a bill for my loan interest again, I'm going to pay that and I'm going to pay the loan off in full, the $80,000. Well, he would pay another $4,000 in loan interest. So. Scenario A here is if he pays the loan interest on the anniversary date at month 12, the total interest he's going to pay, assuming it's paid off in two years, will be $8,000. Two interest payments of $4,000 and his growth has been $8,160. Now, what if he doesn't pay the loan interest at the one year mark? Because he doesn't have to. He can allow it to ride, he can let it compound. Well, what will happen then is the loan balance will go from 80,000 
This will be at the one year mark. And this is if he does not pay 80 to 84. Then what happens? For the next 12 months, you've got a 5% interest rate on that $84,000. So what does that mean? Well, 12 months later, you're going to see. So if you pay it off at that point in time, the total interest, 4,000 and 4,200. Total interest paid, 8,200. Total gains, 8,160. I like how he asked about seeing an 80% loan because that's a, a nice number where we're very, very close to a wash effect. Now, it depends how long you have a policy. If you're starting out with a policy or within the first five years, you're not going to see it growing by 4%. We're going to have a negative hit there because we're still overcoming the early years. But in many cases, if I have policy for a while, the growth rate will be right around 4%. Could definitely be stronger if I'm looking at it on an annual basis. So I've got that 4% growth. I've got a 5% cost to borrow. If I'm borrowing 80%, I'm paying loan interest on the 80% loan, but I'm earning that 4% on the full cash value. And it could be a case where the growth rate may be slightly higher than the loan interest. We have seen that in the past. Right now, we don't see that to be the case, where it's flipped, where the cost to borrow is a bit higher than the actual growth rate. As time passes, if we look at the history of whole life, we always see times where the growth rate's more favorable versus the loan rate. Like It always works out over time. That's always what we've seen. But this is good information to be aware of. What I like about it a lot and what a lot of times people tend to uh, appreciate is the fact that if I don't pay the loan interest, that actually puts me in a situation where I'm negative, which in this case, it's not that much. It's literally $40. However, if I'm looking at a larger policy and I start adding a couple zeros or I increase that loan to 85 or 90%, now that becomes much more noticeable. I feel it and I feel like I want to pay the loan down faster to lessen my out-of-pocket interest because it's really just a numbers game. I know what the growth is going to look like. We measure it year over year and we can get a nice projection of what the cash value will actually grow by. So that's easy to do. The game is seeing exactly what am I going to pay in loan interest and what can I do to reduce that as I look at the numbers and such. So let's look at one more piece here, which has to do with loan interest accrual. I wanna talk about this a little bit because it's kind of on the same point or same topic that we just discussed. So how loan interest accrues is it begins to accrue on the date you take your loan through your policy anniversary date. So let's assume you have a policy with a January 1st date. So you've got a policy date of January 1st. We've got the exact same scenario. You take a loan of $80,000 on January 1st, which is your anniversary date. Here's how it will work. Loan interest is going to begin to accrue on your anniversary date, which coincidentally, you took that loan out then at 5%. Over 12 months, that'll come out to what? $4,000, which we would then add that to the loan balance, which would give you a total of $84,000. Let's assume you take it on July 1st at 5%. Here's what'll happen. You took the loan July 1st. 5% accrues from July 1st through January 1st, which is how many months? Six months. Six months, a 5% interest on $40,000 is how much? $2,000. Here's another way you can do it. And this is actually the way I prefer to do it. So let's take our $80,000 loan times the loan interest rate, 5%. There's your $4,000. Now, loan interest accrues daily, so you could divide this by 365 days. If you want to keep it a bit easier, you can divide it by 12. Now you know how much loan interest is going to accrue every month, approximately. So $333.33333333 three cents. Three, so many times I can't even say it every time. 
Multiply that by six, six months. Look at that, $2,000. Let's go back to the number. Let's say you paid it off nine months in, what would happen? There's the total interest. So this is a nice way just to get an idea of what the loan interest will look like. When you get the exact numbers, it'll typically be different than a quick calculation you run, but you should always be somewhat close when we break down the numbers. So this right here is a nice way to calculate loan interest. And this is assuming you take a policy loan at the beginning of your po policy year or six months in. What happens if you already have a balance? So let's assume you have an existing balance of $80,000. When January 1st comes around, we'll assume you've paid your loan interest for the prior year and you're starting the next year fresh. Loan interest is going to begin to accrue at 5%. So that's that $333 per month. Okay, got that. What happens if you take another loan six months in, in July again? So July 1st, let's say you take another $20,000 loan. What's going to happen now? Well, July 1st, before you take that additional $20,000 loan, how much interest has accrued on the $80,000? 5% for six months equals $2,000. Okay, so you're at $82,000. Now, if you take a $20,000 loan that's added to the current balance, and that would begin to accrue at 5% for the next six months. It can be a bit confusing, but here's what I can say. Insurance companies are very, very good at tracking it. In the event they do make a mistake, we do like to track this as well. Sometimes we do have individuals we work with that calculate the loan interest. They feel that it's off, they send it to us, we review it with them, and if there is a mistake, we will bring it to the insurance company. A lot of times there's not. Just what happens is if you start taking multiple loans and such, it, it does become rather complex because the loan interest, we did everything based on a monthly calculation here to keep it simple. Technically, accrues at daily interest. So if we go back to that $4,000 amount, what we would actually do is this. So let me start from the beginning. 80,000 at 5%, 4,000, divided by 365 days, there's your daily loan interest. So this is how insurance companies calculate it. So if we're making payments, it's going to depend what day did they receive the payment we made, the loan principal payment, which is going to chip away at the balance and adjust the loan interest calculation. Same thing is true if we are adding more to the loan balance by taking out additional loans. Point is, that is something we can calculate. Uh, what I like to do is always aim to keep it simple because this does give us a nice estimate of what the number should look like, but then at the same time, dig into the details if needed. So as always, I do hope this helps. Let us know if you have any follow-up questions here and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks so much for watching. Hey guys, Steve here with IBC Global. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you're interested in a whole life insurance policy and you'd like to work with our company in setting it up, please visit our website, ibcglobalinc.com. We would love to work with you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And as always, I hope this helps.